Hello, everyone. I'm Leon, and uh, I'm from Alibaba Cloud. Today, I want to share with you the traps of using Hive features in KVM environment. I hope our practical experience can help you know, know more about Hive related features and avoiding some issues in practice. Let's get started. The content I want to introduce includes four parts. The first is the background and then the performance uh, issue encountered when using the Hyper-V features will be described. After this, the cost analysis and the solutions of the issue will be discussed. The last part is conclusion. In the public cloud scenario, Windows Guest occupies a considerable proportion, especially in the scenarios of cloud desktop and cloud gaming. Hyper-V is a hypervisor of Microsoft, which supports Windows Guest very well. To make Windows Guest work better, KVM simulates many features supported by Hyper-V. Currently, QM has supported dozens of Hyper-V features, such as HV Time, HV as Timer, HV VOPIC, HV IPI, HV Speed Knox, and so on. Most of which are to optimize the performance of Windows Guest running in the QM environment. The common usage of these features is to turn on all of them. Many games currently on the market are running in Windows, and the same is true in cloud gaming scenarios. Cloud gaming workload has have some typical characteristics. For example, many game programs are multi-threaded and they use GPU to render game sense. It will take up more CPU and GPU resource when running. Through the virtualization, uh, through the virtual machine monitor, you can observe that its workload in the guest generates a lot of IPIs. And some can reach up to 35,000 per second. When we connect this desktop through the Microsoft Remote Desktop Client from, from Mac, we can observe more one-to-many IPIs. The frequency of which is about 1200 per second. This one-to-many IPIs is sent to some vCPUs uh, of the virtual machine. And the HV API feature can be used to optimize the efficiency of virtualization. We found that the performance of the same workload running in the virtual machine is much worse than running directly on the biomatter. With Hyperweave related features enabled, the average frame rate of the game running in the virtual machine drops by one frame. The proportion of the FPS more than 55 decreased by 10%. This performance difference drove us to analyze the reasons behind the performance degradation. The so first step we did was to compile the virtualization overhead incurred by running the same workload in a virtual machine with different configurations. In the test, we found that after enabling Hyper-V related features, the so all over virtualization overhead was significantly reduced.
However, the degree of virtualization overhead reduction is not as good as a configuration method of disabling the hypervisor CPU ID features. From the following two fingers, we can observe the virtualization overhead on the different configurations, which res respectively show the total number of VM exit and the total time spent on virtualization processing. The result shows that enabling HyperV related feature is not the best choice. At first, we were a little surprised by this. Through in-depth analysis, uh, we found the reason. Through experiments, we can deduce the strategy of Windows Guest Chosen System Timer. When exposing the hypervisor CPID feature, S timer will be preferred as the system timer, followed by HPT and RTC. When all Hyper-V uh, Hyper features are enabled, S timer will be selected. If the Hyper-V related features are not enabled, Windows will choose HPT or RTC as the system timer. When hiding the hypervisor CPU ID feature, Windows will give priority to the local peak timer as a system timer, while HPT and RTC have low priority. In addition, the enabling of hypervisor features depends on the hypervisor CPU ID feature. Hiding the hypervisor CPU ID feature will cause the Hyper-V related features to be unavailable. Let's take a look at the virtualization overhead of different timers. First, look at the HPT and RTC. RTC is simulated by intercepting the port IO operations while HPT is simulated by intercepting memory map I.O. operations. Both of them are simulated in user space. In our case, that is in QMU. S-Timer is simulated by intercepting MSR access. The processing of the critical path is in the QM. The virtualization of the local peak timer is simulated by intercepting the related access of local peak. It is also simulated in curl space. Compared to the virtualization cost of the four types of timers, it can be found that the cost of a local peak timer and the S timer is relatively close and lower than HPT and RTC. There are two reasons for the high virtualization overhead of HPT and RTC. One is that the number of VM exit is more. The second is that the context switch overhead of the current mode and the use mode. With the above information, we can know why the virtualization overhead is lower when the Hyper-V features are turned on. This is because virtualization overhead of OS timer is much lower than the virtualization overhead of HPT and RTC. On the other hand, why is virtualization overhead of hiding the CPID feature the lowest this is because S timer also has some side effects, which will increase the virtualization overhead 
in other place. For S timer, you need to know the following facts. First, the realization of S timer depends on HV scenic. And second, the auto end or end I end of interrupt function of HV scenic conflicts with the peak V hardware function. Therefore, when S timer is configured, the peak we had well in function will be disabled. This will lead to an increase in the overhead of interrupt injection. For inter-CPUs, the virtualization of IPI needs to be trapped by intercepting the ICR register access. When the peak we function is turned off, injecting interrupt into the vCPU may cause VM exit. Therefore, in a business scenario with the intensive API, if S timer is used, it will greatly increase the virtualization overhead of API, thereby affecting business performance. When the guest use local peak as a system timer, the OPIC V function can work normally, so there is no such issue. There are several, several options for how to avoid the defects of S timer in the product, uh, production environment. The first is to disable the hypervisor CPU ID feature in the scenarios where API is intensive. The advantage of this, or this approach is the simplicity, but the disadvantage is that it also disables other hypervisor feature, so you cannot enjoy the benefits that other feature bring. The second solution is to change the mechanism of Windows to select system timers. So that when Windows guest detects hypervisor CPU ID, the local peak timer can also be selected as a system timer. This method requires the support of Microsoft. The third solution is to resolve the conflicts, conflict between HVS timer and the PV hardware functions. This can be achieved by improving the following three key points. The first is to disable the auto end of interrupt function of HV scenic, which can be achieved by, C by setting the HV deprecating AEOI recommended flag. And the community code already supports it. The second point is to allow the guest to use a peak we had where MSR to access local peak instead of have with virtual MSR. Because local peak access through virtual MSR cannot be accelerated by a peak we have well functions. The last point is to optimize end of interrupt induced VM exit caused by S timer. By making the above change, the S timer virtualization overhead will be close to the local peak timer. So we can always configure S timer for HAPWI without worrying that it will affect performance. This page shows the actual effect of the third solution above. When all the features of HAPWI are turned on, 
So all our virtualization overhead can be minimized. This is due to the optimization of the S timer virtualization overhead and the local peak timer is equivalent. And the HV API feature of HAPV can significantly reduce the uh, one to many API virtualization overhead. So one to many API is different from the all but self API. It cannot be accelerated directly by the OPIC V hardware features. Therefore, or guest sending such an API requires multiple writes to the ICR register, which will cause multiple WMF seed to be generated. And each V API use a PVV, which can generate only one VMX seed. Finally, let's make a summary. First of all, we utilize the halfway related features in the KVM environment has some defects. In order to make it easier to use, we need to avoid letting users to configure, the, uh, to configure which halfway features to use according to the workload. Added features should not cause performance degradation. Otherwise, it will make the new feature less useful and increase the complexity of configuration. Secondly, it is necessary to pay attention to the features and the defects of Hyper-V, especially when used the old version of QMU and QM. It needs to be evaluated according to its, its supported features. Blindly turning on all the halfway features is not necessarily the best way. Before the defects are solved, it is better to do performance evaluation to find out the best configuration. For IPI-intensive workload, especially attention is required. Okay, this is all I want to introduce today. Thank you for attending. If you have any questions, you can send an email to the address in this page. Bye.